How is your hunger for God? Several weeks ago, we began this study about hungering for God and saw that longing after Jesus with a heart of love and devotion is called biblical fasting. The New Testament doesn't say it means only eat salary and drink, you know, the soup. It doesn't say that like the three Hebrew boys, you know, in Babylon. No. It doesn't quantify it into some little thing that we can say, I'm doing more than you, and you're not doing enough. See, that's, that's not New testament It's whether or not we're hungering more for God, His truth, and Christ's return than we were yesterday. If not, we need to do something. We need to remediate that situation. In the Old Testament, and basically I wrote these down for you, in the Old Testament, biblical fasting... Uh, and remember, in the Old Testament, everything was very structured. It was an annual event to get serious about knowing God. And the whole nation had to participate, and everything shut down, and they had this national fast, and everybody was checking to make sure you were fasting, you know. And, and there were some people that really got into it, and they really did get serious about knowing God. But God says in the book of Isaiah that the vast, vast majority it was just something everyone did, and they, they didn't like it, and they didn't want to do it, and they had to do it, and they'd get in trouble if they didn't do it, and everybody was checking on them, so they went through it, and they made the most of it. By the time we get to the New Testament, biblical fasting was an ancient spiritual discipline. Now, we have to be really careful about this, because nowadays we have this notion that if, you know, if the mystics did it, or if the, the monks did it, or if, you know, Saint so-and-so of somewhere did it, it must be good, because it's old, you know, and ancient, and it's spiritual. No. It was an ancient spiritual discipline that went back to this Old Testament, biblically described fast. But what it became in the New Testament was a time to reschedule my life with God at the center instead of everything else at the center. Which what, See, if we're floating with everybody else, we're listening to them, we're going along with them, we're saying, oh, yeah, oh, I'll try that. Yeah, it sounds good. And what is the world doing? Dining is at the center. I mean, I know people that they collect restaurants, and it's got to be more exotic. I mean, they've got to have hummingbird tongues, you know, and they can't have anything common. They just, they, they could not eat normal food. Dining. And I mean, their whole life is built around the kitchen. And uh, I mean, it's just an aura. They think that they're doing a, a cooking show, you know, to live in. Other people, it's relaxing. I mean, yeah. Uh, a lot of that in America. Amusing. Uh, gaming and all that and a lot of movie watching is amusing. Ah, muse, not think. Just carried along. It's kind of the theme park, you know, just live for amusement. Accumulating. We have more stuff per person than any culture or civilization has ever had in the history of Earth here today. Most of us are accumulators. And caring for all that stuff totally dissipates a lot of our emotional, mental, and physical energy. Advancing, that's what some people are. They're getting ahead in the world, and they're going to advance academically, business-wise, in their field, and that's really what they're focused on. And if it's sports, they will neglect anything to advance. And if it's, you know, business, they'll move anywhere to advance with the company. Leave the family behind if need be, but I'm going to advance. That's very much what the floaters are doing. How about securing? I'm going to accumulate enough stuff so no one can tell me what to do I mean, did you read that last week, the top five tech titans, the barons of, of the computer world, just last week, the five of them made $13.4 billion. They earned that much in one week between the five of them? Hmm. Yeah, they're securing their wealth. And a multitude of other things that are not wrong, they're just deadly to intimacy with the Almighty. And if we're floating and not paddling against that, pretty soon we're dining and relaxing and amusing and accumulating and advancing and securing and all that other stuff, and we're neglecting intimacy with God. So how is your hunger for God today? By the way, we get into the book of Acts and the epistles, we see biblical fasting shape their lives. They used it as a tool to shape their lives. 
They, they wanted, Paul said, I fast all the time. He says, I want to bring my body in, unto the subjection, under the lordship and rule of Jesus Christ. And I don't want my God to be my belly. And I'm constantly having my life shaped by this ancient spiritual discipline that I'm not going to quantify. Paul never, you know, Paul was great at explaining everything. He doesn't explain it. He just says, I do it more than you all because I long for his appearing. And their ministries. Did you know that people, when you get to Acts 14, people that are leading in the church are chosen and commissioned with the whole church fasting and praying? I mean, people were real stakeholders in the church and in ministry, so much so that they denied other things. Their worship, their outreach. I mean, when they were sending out missionaries, the whole church Paul was sent out. Can you imagine the accrual in heaven of the people that laid hands and sent Paul out on his first missionary journey, who, who his work still extends to us today, and they were the ones that were set apart by the Holy Spirit to send him out? They're kind of like the founders of Amway. Do you remember back then where they got a quarter percent of everything? And, and it's just unbelievable the, the spiritual benefit of having this fasting that shapes your life and ministry and worship. And finally, the early church, we see a hunger for God as a powerful way to yield every part of my life to God's supremacy. So, basically, the conclusion is this. Biblical fasting is an immediate way to declare your allegiance to God and to his way and glory in every part of our lives.